Okay, I'm Lucy. Uh, this is Bo. I'm Gavin. And we live on the Isle of Wight in the UK. Little blue, uh, because um, it's the world's smallest penguin. I quite like penguins. I like I like uh, nature's go at amphibious animals. When thinking about how we can kind of build something in between a caravan and a boat, uh, naturally I'm looking at what has nature done, how does it do it? You know, uh, those are the things that kind of end up inspiring me uh, more than perhaps what man has kind of designed in the past. In the, the 1960s, I uh, can't remember the guy's name, but uh, a British inventor uh, first invented the concept of the carabout. He eventually put some in production, I think 400 models he, man he, he sold um, until I think there was an accident with one of them where some people took it out to sea and they got blown out to sea and I think from then on he, he discontinued uh, manufacturing them. Uh, they were much bigger and they were very boxy. They were a bit like just a floating caravan and I wanted something that did both a bit better. I wanted obviously a caravan, but it also occurred to me that an aerodynamic caravan is actually a boat front. You know, it, as in, you can see here at the front here, we've got this huge windscreen, uh, which gives us great view. Um, uh, it's much more aerodynamic. We're obviously as tucked behind the van as much as possible in its slipstream, but also where the we, we are slightly wider than the van, and so where it does begin, the wind begin to hit this this craft is where it's already being sloped. Um, so it was in my interest to not make the roof too high. So it's all, the the measurements of this thing, the dimensions, I should say, um, are thinking of the vehicle that was 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 towing it. Um, so that the electric vehicle can still have a reasonable range. Uh, the weight was a key feature. I wanted to keep this at the quarter ton. So, um, and that's with a, a 50 kilo lithium on board. So the boat itself is only a 200 kilo. And to, to keep it to that weight, um, I had to I had to build the boat uh, from scratch, starting from a, an aluminium chassis and then enveloping that chassis in composites uh, using cores, uh, not foam based, but honeycomb cores to keep the weight down, but have reasonable insulation as well and acoustic properties. Um, the hull was quite a tricky thing uh, to, to form and, and, and mold um, and trying to bring a cabin all the way to the back of a boat and it not disable certain aspects as in you can still when you're in the water you can still walk around the side of the boat and drop the anchor um, you know because we've got no access out the front here um, although the entire roof system actually lifts up it actually has got um, uh, four independent legs which enable us to decide to slant the whole roof assembly either have it all up which gives us standing room throughout or we can actually tilt the roof uh, towards the sun where a 300 watt solar panel uh, has much better gain. Um, and that essentially charges the, the 50 kilo lithium that we have uh, under the seat just here, um, which runs the electric outboard, uh, which is attached to the, to the back step. This is where the, the electric outboard The aluminium would go. plate, uh, the, the outboard. We also have um, a secondary uh, drive system this year, untested yet, which is a pedal drive um, and it goes underneath this. This is basically just a, a blocking plate, uh, but essentially running in the same bolt pattern is a raised well, which comes up to about here. And then you actually have this pedal drive system that slots in it, uh, where you can sit up on the back shelf with a backrest and actually there's a propeller that is run with human power. Um, so, because uh, some of the reservoirs here in Portugal um, are not too keen on, on even electric outboards, um, we want to be able to take this into the, 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 the nature reserves, the reservoirs here. Uh, and so to fulfill the code, that's why, that's the only reason I've done the pedal drive is so that we can still take it in some of these reservoirs because um, uh, 
uh, in many ways that, that I built this to to actually access them. So it was a, a necessary um, adaptation. We've got a wood stove which is used for cooking um, and for heating. It's not very big. Uh, it's extremely lightweight. Uh, and it's made of titanium because uh, you can, it doesn't suffer so much from um, distortion titanium. It has very low uh, kind of distorting ca uh, character. Um, sliding door mechanism, so for utter simplicity. And depending on where we are, we might burn charcoal in there if we're surrounded by other campers and we don't want to smoke them out too much. We'll burn charcoal and we actually make um, uh, charcoal parcels um, like this we, we get two sheets of newspaper uh, and like a, 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 a wrapping a parcel we actually put charcoal in here and then staple it and so that you've got this kind of one package where you can fit into the stove you light the newspaper and it can burn that charcoal in one before that we were making and making a right mess we're trying to put uh, charcoal into this stove and it was the charcoal was going over everything so this was a, 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 a neat little way of creating uh, parcels from other people's rubbish because we're pulling it the newspaper from bins um, uh, we will burn some coal uh, sometimes to get through the night but most of the time we want to burn wood because of course we can gather that from the locations that we tend to stay at there's always small bits of wood and being such a small burner we it's very efficient we can actually burn sticks and and things you know we don't need logs so much and so it's quite easy to establish enough wood for for the day the water tank here um uh, it's an old fire extinguisher just move these hats so yeah, it's an old fire extinguisher uh, which i adapted and uh, cut the base off and added a flat plate on the bottom so that we can sit this on the wood stove uh, we can heat this entire mass of water up and use that as a thermal mass through a cold night so the fire can go out but it's invested all of its heat into this water which will might get to 80 celsius and like a hot water bottle with a blanket it slowly leaks the heat to us all through the night um, we can also have a shower with this as, as well, but predominantly it's used for drinking, yeah. so it tends to stay cold. But it's a feature again that we designed in, and it's easy to take down. It's just held in here uh, and at the top here, and you can very easily walk with it because it's a kind of a narrow walking design. Um, and we've got this table that, that moves around uh, in many directions um, uh, as well to uh, be able to prepare food and. and do things. The front section of the boat is um, uh, where is food storage mostly. We have to be highly organised in a small space. We, we you know we have to wash up every time more or less. Uh, we can't really you can't in these small spaces like tiny houses you can't afford to be too inefficient. Um, and so that everything has eventually finds its place. I mean we were early on in this trip. We've only been here for uh, a, a few days, but we're slowly trying to find. Uh, where we where we where we like to have things. I sleep down here. Mummy sleeps on top. Sit back. So Bo's bed goes underneath on the the ground, and then we have uh, slats that fit in to these little grooves. Uh, so we put the slats across, and then these side seats go across the middle and that makes a whole double bed. All of our storage uh, is under the seats. Uh, all the bed and pillows. Uh, pillows, everything. bedding. No, 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 I'm on it. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of storage in here. Uh, yeah, they're quite the big spaces. <laughs> when you're travelling on the road, there's never enough storage. Yeah. <laughs> it, it took a good year uh, to build, um, I'd say. That's, that's yeah. kind I'd say of... A, a good year. Uh, because obviously alongside having to work at home with the, the garden produce yeah, yeah. Um, it was kind of evening and weekend and whatever spare time <laughs> yeah. to be able to and then obviously resourcing um, the, the items that we needed I hate um, buying too much of items I hate buying uh, I'm not buying the, like you know resins to stock up on I kind of want to buy enough to, to build with and, and, and not have uh, you know having to find storage for these things. Typically these things like paints and resins don't have a huge light shelf life. 
you know, it's not like I mean, you know. The, the the actual hull of the boat, um, obviously you had to buy new. The fiberglass, the resin, everything yeah. was was bought. But um, the the smaller items, um, yeah, the hardware. like you know, parts of the legs to to fit up, uh, to put up the roof, um, all the hardware that you see. We have um, a scrapyard on the island, um, and living on the island, we have a prison and a hospital um, that is constantly upgrading and renewing their kitchens and their um, their plumbing, and and it all ends up at the scrapyard. So. Yeah. Gav is probably the only person that goes to the scrapyard to buy. <laughs> he he is allowed in. Uh, we're very lucky he's allowed in, and he'll go to all the different the aluminium pile, the stainless pile, the copper pile, and we will go and salvage parts that you know we need hinges, bolts, um, nuts and screws, and lengths of metal. Well, that's the stuff um, that I don't mind storing, because yeah. it obviously can last forever. We'll, we'll go to the scrapyard fortnightly, mm. and we will go and look for stuff. Um, not necessarily stuff that we are looking for. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll find something that is just too good not to buy. Um, and it's like, we've got to have that because it might come in useful for something. And it does. There's things on this, this rig that, you know, you bought years ago mm. that have come in useful and we've been able to use it. I mean, all things like, you know, handles and a lot of it's either aluminium or stainless yeah. because it will last a lifetime. Um, you don't have to keep renewing things. Well, the other luxury of the Isle of Wight is it's a world famous boating place and mm. boats are constantly being dismantled. And so it did help with our location of what we salvage at this scrapyard. And a lot of it is boat we, equipment. We have, um, we have about two or three lifeboat stations on the island that the lifeboats yeah. renew all of their rigging every year without fail. Whether it needs to be or not, they will get rid of it and it's brilliant for someone like yourself to well, be able to build yeah. things with with that stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, we yeah. find that typically, you know, the, the, the more, if you have inefficient people around you in a sense of, you know, like people that are doing lots of formal gardening will will not really want to compost any kind of weeds and things. It will be too messy for their, their eyes. And so that we get those. But I mean, the wood stove was mm. built from sheets of titanium yeah. bought from the scrapyard. Um, we took it to a local welder, Gav um, cut it all to shape and to size and gave him all the measurements, mm. had the idea of a sliding door. He welded it all together and um, the actual wood stove moves, it, it, it pivots around. Yeah, because it's on a mono leg. You can actually move it. The, the actual, uh, the, the chimney is structural. Yeah, um, and so this is all clamped down and to this heat proof it has plate. A heat board at the back. And this actually pivots round, and you can actually move it out of the way uh, if, if necessary. But most of the time, we leave it like this. It stays like that majority of the time. But again, it was all yeah. salvaged metal to make a, a really small, lightweight stove. Yeah, the titanium um, was off eBay. Yeah. You know, the yeah. the sliding door stoves notoriously uh, distort and you can't move them once it gets too hot. So this has got a much thicker grade uh, titanium, the, the actual uh, door plate. I think it's about four millimeters. Mm, okay. um, so, but the rest of it is much thinner and lighter. I mean, this was from the scrapyard. It's our- um, We call this Tron. Big... <laughs> uh, if you know the film Tron, then yeah, this is, <laughs> yeah. This is our plate Tron. But things like this is all from the scrapyard. Um, I think I got about three of them in one go. It's great for chopping up, for preparing food. Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's a just, washing tray. Yeah, it's just brilliant. It's so Cleaning useful. the stove out, we put that yeah, under put to that catch in, the, the out. ash. Outside, uh, we've got a little electric winch on the front here, underneath this metal lid again salvaged from the scrapyard. It um, it enables uh, Little Blue to 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 actually we can it can pull itself into the water using an anchor, if appropriate. So on reservoirs that actually have beaches, as long as it's not like an estuary where it's uh, boggy mud, uh, Little Blue, you can actually easily um, retrieve and launch her, um, which is another thing that we wanted. Obviously the wheels uh, that trailer her, like a caravan, remain in place. We can actually get change the and pull them up slightly if necessary if we were doing an extended travel for better flow through the water but otherwise we typically leave the wheels as is but if we are coming into uh, a beach or whatever or, or, or an area where we want to stay on land because it's not 
always ideal to stay on the water. Um, this thing is extremely easy to, to get in and out of the water using the electric winch uh, combined with an anchor. But it only weighs uh, a quarter of a tonne. So we've put handles around and we find a bit of pushing generally is all that's needed, pulling and pushing. And it's, we tend to, to human launch this most of the time. Uh, if there's a slipway and it's quite steep, we'll definitely use the winch to save the van venturing down slipways, uh, you know, where there is some hazard potentials um, with all the electrics at the, at the back there. Um, you know, and this was all inspired by seeing miniature caravans that were being pulled behind bicycles you know what 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 could be done I what can the, be the, created the little, um, teardrop uh, yeah again teardrop, inspired me you know we like the, the teardrop inspired me very much yeah, yeah. and other yeah. cara boats that that people have made you know the whole concept that i was really sold on you know this idea that you can have this caravan that quite easily will 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 actually launch and spend the day in the water it performs uh, really pleasant in the water. Uh, it tracks along quite nicely in a straight line, uh, yet will almost turn on a dime if, 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 you know, if you need it to. I think that generally helps because underneath a, the, the aluminium chassis uh, actually protrudes uh, and kind of acts as a, a guiding keel and keeps it tracking because it's a very short hull. We're only three meters long, we're 1.8 meters wide. Uh, so it's not the, 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 the best craft probably for uh, solar or electric driven. But as long as you're okay with low speeds, kind of walking speed, it's, it's, it's perfectly efficient enough, you know. And of course it's not designed for the sea, it's not designed for waves, it's not, it's not for crossing oceans by any means. Although I think I'd rather be well, it's in. actually designed for going in lakes and res reservoirs to actually observe like the wildlife and just the surroundings of where you're at. We don't want to yeah. go fast. Well, so. as, a, as kind of like a, a quiet hide, like a bird hide, the nature, because uh, the electric motor is almost silent, you can put the roof so that you have full standing room and you've got this 360 degree viewing point. Uh, uh, around so it's incredibly useful for uh, really getting a good look at what's around you you know 